Hello everyone and welcome to Stitch Bliss Corner. Mary Rose here and today I'm going to talk about Marilyn Levette Himblum. Now I've got I've got some general information about her. I've got my notes. <laughs> uh, her creations as in her works of art because she painted as well. Her stitching and her determination to present stitches with the means to create fine works of art. Um, her endeavours at a time when it was pretty much unheard of to make available to stitches a great, greater colour palette. She, she uh, was very keen to get the large stitching companies, you know, that made the floss and everything, to create more colours because the designs that she had in her head, she couldn't find the colours that would reflect what she wanted to show. So she campaigned for them to put forward more colours for her. And I think at first they, they weren't too interested. So she went about being a doing person. She went about uh, trying to, to uh, create her own range of colours. Um, anyway, I shall go on about that shortly. Um, she said the whole idea of having a better colour palette was so that she could uh, shape things without uh, resorting to backstitch and that sort of thing. She was passionate about a sense of justice when it came to copywriting designers' works. Uh, she was very spiritual. Her family, world affairs, politics, nature and music all had an influence on her design motivation. I've, I've made myself some notes here. <laughs> um, now I'm going to do so, talk about the Ar Amish influence on her, um, angels, um, and I'm going on to the Celtic Christmas story, which I think is uh, one, an, an interesting one. And also some stories about what influenced her to create her angels. And also the angel quilt program, which she provided the first angel for, for that program, which I'll speak about. All right, so I suppose the best way to go about this is to just give you a little bit of information generally, and then I'll go on to the, the other information I have here. Um, now this is from Wikipedia and it says Marilyn Levette Imblem was born in Youngstown, Ohio in 1946 and she attended Ursuline High School. Um, it says here she was known especially for her Victorian angel designs. Her design business is told in a garden with her most famous designs sold under the product lines of Butternut Road and Lavender and Lace. Uh, Marilyn's professional design career began in the 1960s as an advertising illustrator and fashion illustrator. Her first published embroidery design, inspired by her experiences living in Amish country, was the quilting. I'll put a picture here of that. Told in a Garden number one. And there's a little bit of a story to go with that, which I'll tell you in a moment. Now, it says here, when she finished her piece, she showed it to the owner of the local needle workshop, who told her that if she graphed the design, the shop would sell it. The first 25 copies sold almost immediately and her business was born. Since then, Marilyn, as she is, oh well, MLI, as she is known to Stitches, has sold millions of copies of her designs and has developed an international fan base. She was the mother of six children. She passed away on August 14, 2012, aged 66 years. So, now it 
says here, uh, we had a DMC tribute to her and some of the information it says her creative use of subtle colour gradations, beading and decorative threads was something that really hadn't been seen in the cross-stitch world before her. Marilyn did other unique things like include alternate skin shade palettes for ethnic groups. And Marilyn said, when I design, I am still the stitcher. There is magic that happens, a piece that is like a thread running through the forest and I follow it with my heart. And they say, thank you, Marilyn, for the beauty of your inspired pieces and the way that you have allowed us glimpses of something rarer, higher and lovelier. May we meet you in the next garden. So that was DMC's tribute to her. Now, here is some, there's Marilyn in her garden. And I thought this might be interesting for you. It says, when I was a child, my father was a gardener and I had the wonderful advantage of living near the woods. My father taught me to love little things and the wonder of seeing nature. The woods were a safe place to play and to let my imagination soar. She said, there are no degrees or art schools that I can list to prove that I learned about art in any formal manner. After high school, I went to work in an advertising office. While filing, pasting and serving copy, I watched the artists draw. After eight months, I became the children's advertising artist at $1.15 per hour. When my children were born, I did freelance ad artwork. However, I continued to paint watercolour flowers and ladies in long gowns and to stitch. These were given as gifts. One year I spent three months hand painting my Christmas cards on decal edged paper. Most of the people who received them thought they were store bought and threw them away. Uh, when my children grew older, I returned to work full time. Only this time I was the top fashion illustrator at the advertising office. One dress would take up a full page and I did all of my own layouts. This was when I met my current husband, Bruce. He was the camera operator who took pictures of my ads. Our dates were spent driving in the country, taking pictures of old Amish farms. We married and moved to the country. The house was an old Victorian relic that was located near the Amish farms. All of my days were spent quilting, gardening, painting and cross-stitching. The Amish family across the road became our dearest friends. We shared so much with them and I was shown a glimpse into their extraordinary lives and I've got a little bit of information about the Amish shortly. Circumstances made it imperative that we move back into the city. Oh how I missed my Amish friends. At this point I stitched my first design, the quilting, for my home. That's the one that I showed you before, that one. And I'll just hold it there for a second. Well, I can read this while I hold it. Um, Amish designs available in 1985 did not show the true spirit of the Amish that I had come to know. After this piece was framed, I took it proudly to my local needlework store. The owner said, graph it and I'll sell it. I thought she was crazy, but I did it using Xerox copies, sandwich bags and a photo. These packages didn't even have a top. <laughs> she asked what I wanted to sell them for. I said, a dollar? When she insisted I sell it for five dollars, I was so embarrassed it made me feel like I was stealing people's money for nothing. The owner took 25 designs and in three days they were sold. Oh, sorry, sold out. We went to other stores in our area after I did the second design. Owners dragged me into the back rooms and gave me distributors' names. After a few weeks, new distributors were calling me. All of my bookkeeping was kept in a little notebook. Orders poured in. 
We folded graphs at the dining room table and packed boxes in the kitchen. It all started with a $50 investment and no advertising. Word of mouth took them all across the world. I had to learn business. I did things they said were nuts, like giving away free things, calling stores to see if the design sold, and treating my workers with respect and paying them too much money. Now the accountants and bankers look at me and wonder. I think I succeeded by doing things from instinct. So I have learned art, business and life from others, making it up as I go along. I follow my heart and I'm amazed always at the results. We live in the woods by the sea in Maine. The business is called, oh sorry, is all in a 200 year old house, two miles from our home. My four older children went to college because of my little cross stitch designs. We adopted two babies when they were one day old. Matthew is now eight and Sarah is two. This was in 1995, but I thought you'd like to get a taste of the lady herself. My home is large, so everyone returns for holidays. Last year, I had an addition put on the house with a new studio, just like a real artist. Isn't she modest? Finally, I felt I deserved a nice room to work in instead of a corner in the attic. There are large cages with my angels in this room. Three cockatoos watch me and sit on my shoulder and listen to my music as I design. There is a large garden and flowers forever blooming around my house in the woods. Because of the many blessings this work has given me, I feel an obligation to make each new design better than the last. When I design, I am still the stitcher. There is a magic that happens, a piece that is like a thread running through the forest and I follow it with my heart, which I, the DMC tribute took that line. And it just says, Marilyn Levitt, Imlam, 1995. And it's got addendum. Marilyn passed away peacefully in August, 2012. Our lives were blessed by her art and loving spirit. So isn't that a, that really tells you so much about her and how passionate she was. She she did have a, a sense of injustice about uh, how designers, you know, with their copyright and how people would just copy their designs and then just give them away free to other people and things like that. Uh, this upset Marilyn greatly and she did a lot to try and appeal to people's consciences not to do that. And watching Floss Tube and how carefully people you know, the lengths people go to hide uh, charts when they show their work. And I think a certain amount of her influence is there because people do that. They, they tend to have a bit of a conscience about their stitching, which is, you know, very good. Um, I think she'd be very pleased about that side of things that uh, so many of us we, we do our best to uh, protect the design of the person. Uh, anyway, to, to move on, uh, I've just got some notes here as I'm going along. So She emphasised the hours and hours that she put into preparing her designs. We are the Gretel women, following threads to find the place inside we call home. It's another one of her quotes. Now I'll just say a little bit about the Amish. Uh, the Amish are a group of people who follow the teachings of Jacob Amon. That's A-double-M-A-double-N. A 17th century citizen of Switzerland. Uh, it's a Protestant denomination and they follow simple customs. They refuse to take oaths, vote or perform military service. They shun modern technology. Their transport is a horse and buggy. They have not, uh, they do not have electricity or telephones in their homes. The men usually have beards and trousers with the buttons instead of zippers. And the women wear white head coverings and plain dresses, usually without buttons, and use straight pins for fastening. Um, they believe 
sorry, they stay away from things of the world. Um, driving cars, having a TV, going to the movies, wearing makeup, having phones and the convenience of electricity in the home. They often use generators to run their equipment and use horses instead of tractors to do their farm work. The bishop or leader of an Amish community or district sets up the rules of conduct allowed for that district. Some bishops are more lenient than others. They do not have church buildings but have services that are hosted on every second Sunday in their own homes by turns. Um, and I think they, I was looking the other day, my other iPad seems to have decided to go on a vacation. So. <laughs> but I did have to show you, there was a kind of a, uh, not exactly a map, what was it, a chart, where it shows that there are exceptions for electricity and things like that you know some communities allow a limited amount uh, for for agriculture and so on so it's not a hard and fast rule by the looks of it it just depends on which Amish community you're in um, now they usually go to formal school until the age of 15 and in their late teens the youth are permitted a taste of the world to determine if they want to join the community permanently or you know stay within it they're allowed to own a car and many get involved with drugs, alcohol and sex during this time. However, a large number of them do give up uh, the vehicle, the car or the world and stay with the church. Others determine to try to live in the secular world and which would be very difficult, I should imagine. Now, they have a long list of do's and don'ts because they follow the Old Testament law and if they fail to keep to the rules, they are in trouble with the church, church and in danger of being shunned, which is a form of excommunication and so on. They view their good works as earning favour with God. And I've just got this final bit here. The Amish are basically good, hard-working people who try to stay on the right path so that they get final rewards in heaven when their life is over. They say Amish is a lifestyle, not a religion. They choose to keep to the simple life so they can focus more on family and home rather than things that require advanced modern technology. They practice unconditional forgiveness. So, Marilyn was influenced by, by that family and I suppose for her it, it must have emphasized the importance of the things that you get for free in life <laughs> love and caring and the things that there isn't a price tag you know oh, well, anyway sorry I'm going on a bit here so there's the list of the Amish designs but I th you can look those up anyway I just thought I'd just show you the list. I'm not going to read them out, but I'm sure you can look them up. And here are just some of her Amish designs. The Farmer's Market, told in a garden number eight. I hope I'm getting this central. I'm very good at drifting off. So I'm trying to be good and do the right thing. Now, the Farmer's Market... Sorry, oh no, I just thought there might be some more information on that, but there isn't, so we'll just move on now. Um, well, that's just all the different... The Told in the Garden. It's all that list there. Lavender and Lace. I mean, when you think of all the hours and hours of work that went into all these designs and the colours and everything. And then Butternut Road. Okay. Now. Great 
shuffling of papers yet again. Anyway, so she did a bookmark collection and it says here, for many years we released small bookmark designs in response to the demand for these bookmarks that are generally no longer available. In 1996, we released a booklet containing not only reprints of these older small bookmark designs, but other new designs as well. These small designs are wonderful for teaching new stitches or as quick projects. And the bookmark collection. So that's that one there. And This one is Summer Sampa from Butternut Road. This sampa was done by me last summer, she said. Have I got that in the frame there? I hope so. Um, as I travelled across the country, I have tried to make the samplers reflect our current time while still holding on to the heritage of our grandmother's needles. You should hear the bees and feel the sun on the flowers while you stitch this. The ever-changing shades of the Caron threads allows you to paint as you stitch, making each design unique. Right, now then. She sta stated, I feel that creation of these colours is my gift to the stitching world. Now this was what I was saying about all the needle paints. In October 2001, Marilyn tells of how she had been to floss companies begging them for a greater palette of colours and she says that she, it, she only met with deaf ears. So the Re Recreational Crafts, Textiles and Discussion Needlework Group of which Martina Rosenberg was a member, um, she discussed the matter with them and the matter of needing a greater variety of threads. And they all decided that that was a very good idea and, and uh, labelled this idea for the threads as needle paints, the needle paint design idea. And she said she applied for this trademark on April the 2nd, 2001. She did not want to compete with DMC, she said, that DMC would be her main colour palette source, that she was hoping DMC would reproduce the colours so badly needed by the designers, not just her. Then she would not have to go through all the expense and worry. She stated, I feel, as I said before, that creation of these colours is my gift to the stitching world. Well, she was a gift to the stitching world anyway. Uh, this is not a profit move at all on my behalf uh, or a way to discourage copies, as some people think. Not all of the colours would be needle paints on my designs, just the ones no one else makes. So many designers have reached for these colours and have had to use what she called yucky substitutes. These are for special touches. I don't think anyone can claim that I have weighted down my designs with fancy baubles or buckets of beads to create the effect of a lovely design. The needle paints are my way of creating the dreamed of colours. But when I decided the colours of my dreams, which these are, I especially look very carefully to make certain that there are no other, that no other company had ever done these colours before. See, that's her integrity coming in there. Picking colours is an exhausting ritual and takes so much time there's only a certain amount of time of the day that the colours are right. The shades of thread change with how the light hits them. And when they are done in different stitches, they look a different colour altogether. And then she says, this was of October 2001. All 17 colours of needle paints will be released, along with the new design Angel of the Morning, which I might have a picture of that, I'll just see. Each range of shades starts at the palest of pale and goes through to the darkest of dark. They are 100% colour fast 
and according to her these ones were 10 meters skein each sold individually so she started her needle paints to enhance the fine art appearance of her designs she wanted a rainbow of thread colors that designers could choose from um, now if you want to read any more about angel of the morning there will be a link below and uh, and she she was affected very deeply by 9-11 um, as we all were um, and she speaks from the heart about it so you know if you want to have a look at that link I've got it there below now we'll just go on now to <laughs> the baby in the basket one that I did that that was in I showed that in episode 8 entitled how my baby daughter <laughs> solved a stitching dilemma <laughs> and I'm laughing because the suggested fabric is that colour now in our family there hadn't been a girl for 60 years so when I was expecting we'd already had two boys so I didn't even have a girl's name it took us two weeks to think of a name for her. <laughs> and my exuberance at having a girl. Just look. <laughs> look at the look at the pink. I mean, truly. What was I thinking? I mean, it's not even as though it's a subtle pink. It's a hee hee, you know, I'm a girl, I'm a girl. But I I loved the design. It took me a long time to find a design that I liked because I'm very finicky about designs. But this one just absolutely spoke to me. At Baby in the Basket. The little pet. those flowers there and the little bluebirds bluebirds of happiness I mean really little delight she was oh she's a delightful child anyway always has been um, yes yeah, so <laughs> that was the one that I stitched and I didn't know who anything about her Marilyn as a designer and She's influenced my life. She influenced me already when I didn't even know anything about her. So anyway, that was that one. Now I do have some that I am going to stitch that I may as well show you now. And then I'm going to go on to some information about the angels that many people have stitched. Uh, now Angel of Dreams... I'll just take it out of the packet here just to show you. This is one that down the line I'm going to be doing and I'm going to put it in the bedroom, of course. But I mean, that is just delightful. Beautiful. So there's that one. Then this one. I'll be probably having to cut some of this video just to get rid of all the crackle noises. <laughs> yes, that one there. And that's the guardian angel. She's gorgeous too. Then this one I'm going to do in memory of my father. Angel of the Sea. Wait until I just make sure because I don't want to give you any. Yes, I don't want to give you any incorrect information. Angel of the Sea. And that's when he joined the Navy. 
he was working on a farm and his brother joined the Navy and of course he was very young and they wanted to try and keep some of the young men on the farms and working rather than going to war because there was so much you know that people needed food and everything uh, but he managed to to join up and of course the women's land army started too but a lot of the women did the men's jobs while they were away oh anyway stay on subject here right so now we're going to go through some of Marilyn's angels lavender and lace in the arms of an angel Now she says about this one, when I designed this angel, I felt very fragile in need of hope. I made all of the lovely fabrics because I couldn't decide which ones to choose from. So I chose them all, all those fabrics in there, and how she's coordinated them, even though they're all so different, it all works beautifully. And she says, it was the curve of her arm that decided the way the child would be held. It was the music I listened to in the arms of an angel that inspired me to use the colours of hope when all seems lost. I hid a golden rose in her dress. Can you see it? There. Hoping that someone would find it as an unexpected gift. The blood red rose of her heart in her hand as she holds it out for one more try. Her golden wings, not in flight, but on earth, holding the breath of new life. I love the way the baby's head looks so real, she says. If you look closely, she really has three wings. There is a special band of angels who are the closest to God and they have three wings. I was told this by a dear friend who is a nun. The baby's blanket protects the mother as well as the child and the stars of heaven move in circles around her head because she gazes at life and new beginnings. So that's a lovely story about the arms of an angel. Then the angel of the sea, which was the one I was talking about for my father. And it says about this one. The angel of the sea has a baby for several reasons. I have baptised my children in the ocean. My blonde daughter has a blonde baby daughter and we live by the sea. Many people ask for an angel of the sea to protect their family who work or travel on the ocean and felt it represented the small and precious gifts of the sea. It could also mean the Christ child, the great fisher of souls held in his mother's arms. She also seems to float, carrying what is close to her heart over the crashing waves. Everyone can imagine their own interpretation and it will be right for them. And see, for me, it was my dad, so it was right for me. Now here's a picture here of Marilyn with one of her grandchildren. And then there is a picture here, the quilt maker, Lavender and Lace. Does that ring a bell? <laughs> Looks You can see how she has been influenced. That's her granddaughter, Cayenne, Cayenne, C-E-Y-A-N-N-E. -N -N -E. So I'm not sure how to pronounce that name, but that's her granddaughter there. Okay. What else have we got here? The 
quilt maker, that's the one I just showed you, is done in many colours of beige, navy, reds and greens. The quilt is textured and shaded to look realistic. Okay. Then we have Santa of the Forest, Lavender and Lace. And there he is. And what does she say about this one? She says, When I first did this Santa, I gave him an armful of toys. The toys and ribbons were beautiful, but sort of meaningless. When removing fur on his cape, I thought of replacing the toys with animals. The first animal I thought of was a dove of peace. Then I added a little bear, symbolising Russia. The wolf represents countries that have violent governments and use this violence to survive. The gentle brown rabbit is caught in the middle, but looking towards peace. The wise spotted owl sits near the head of man in hopes he will find wisdom before it is too late. Santa's staff represents history, a guide for moving forward. The fabric of his robe became the forest and trees and stars. His colourful mittens represent the children of the world, extensions of the wise person. This design represents a gathering of nations towards world peace as well as respecting the environment. Wow. What a profound, deep thinking person she was. Angel of the Morning, Lavender and Lace. this one she says if I died tomorrow and this was the last angel ever created under my hand I would be at peace she was begun three years ago uh, I'm not sure of the date of that I'm sorry it might be I'll just start again if I died tomorrow and this was the last angel ever created under my hand, I would be at peace. She was begun three years ago and was just another little face, and last summer she became an angel. We couldn't understand her meaning and what she was beseeching heaven for. When the tw Twin Towers fell, the models were 80% finished, so we all rushed her along because now we could see what she was trying to tell us. She is searching into the heavens for an answer. Her time is now. Her face searches the morning light for relief from the darkness. Each person who has seen or worked on her claims she is the perfect angel for us all. Her golden wings tipped with the white of morning light and her bluest gown trailing into the night. Her hands uplifted, one hand is empty and open and her right is full of receiving the light. Everyone, from the stitches to the proofers, to the framers, to the mailers, to the printers, to my wonderful staff, has worked at breakneck speed because she is the one. I need medals for all her heroes. She was to be a December release and now she will be in the mail on October 24th. The detail in the face is achieved through tiny stitches over one linen fabric thread. So... I think you would know the date. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you now the Book of Kells. And there's a reason for that, which will be apparent very shortly. Now here's the Book of Kells and let's give you some information about it. Oh, organize. 
these two. The Book of Kells uh, may have been created to mark the 200th anniversary of St. Columba's death. It's an illuminated manuscript of the four Gospels of the New Testament. Uh, and it's a masterpiece of Celtic art. And I'm thinking of doing a little bit more about the Book of Kells um, when I do a bit about Celtic cross-stitch. But I, I've got so many things coming up. <laughs> it's fitting it all in. Uh, there's the cover of the Book of Kells. Now, this book is in the Trinity College Library in Dublin. And I've actually seen it. And it's on vellum. And the, I think it's once a week they turn the page. You know, they have to wear the gloves and turn the page. It's in a glass case. And it's really something to see. So Marilyn was influenced by the Book of Kells for a very popular and famous sausage which I'm just about to show you that one and I've got some information about that for you so I shall just put Celtic Christmas down for a moment There's the book that they turn the page every week. Or I think it was every week when we were there anyway. And people go past and are amazed at it. And there's the Trinity College where the, the book is. And that's also an illustration from it. June nineteen. 98 Celtic Christmas background. I did Celtic Christmas last year, she says, and from my small bit of knowledge what makes her Celtic is as follows. The border is reminiscent of the Celtic motifs from the Book of Kells, an illustrated manuscript of the Bible. Done by hand, the Bible was copied and embellished with Celtic artwork using stylized knots and animals. The young maiden carrying an advent wreath and the word Noel are symbols of the early missionary work of the monks that evangelised the British Isles. At one point they were banished from Ireland and Scotland to wander and settle in the Italian Alps. Um, this work was also inspired by Lorena McKennett. Uh, that's L-O-R-E-E-N-A McKennett. M C K E N N I T T, a Canadian performer best known for the Mummers Dance. Um, and that's an, an influence that Marilyn actually mentions. And I can read the verses to you. There's a link below to the video clip, and it's well, you probably won't be the same after you've seen it, put it that way. You'll know what I mean if you, if you look at it. It's quite fantastical with strange headpieces and in, unusual instruments and costumes. It's quite ethereal and, and beautiful and, and haunting, the music. Um, in fact, I'll read it to you now. You just have to imagine the music. The music is lovely. And it says, 
When in the springtime of the year, when the trees are crowned with leaves, when ash and oak and birch and yew are dressed in ribbons fair, when owls cool the breathless moon in blue veil of the night, the shadows of the trees appear amidst the lantern light. We've been rambling all the night and some time of this day. Now returning back again, we bring a garland gay. Who will go down to those shady groves and summon the shadows there and tie a ribbon on those sheltering arms in the springtime of the year? The songs of birds seem to fill the wood that when the fiddler plays, all their voices can be heard long past their woodland days. And so they linked their, arm, their hands and danced, round in circles and in rows. And so the journey of the night descends when all the shades are gone. A garland gay we bring you here, and at your door we stand. It is a sprout well budded out, the work of our Lord's hand. And a mummer, it's called the mummer's dance. A mummer is any man, woman or child involved in the fantasy of song, dance and costume. And it is, I can understand why Marilyn was so influenced by that music and how she came to create this lovely piece. I have stitched that, I gave it to a friend. <laughs> okay, uh, now there's one last thing I'm going to show you. Uh, I didn't really know where I was going to be going with this video about this remarkable woman. She's just, well, how can you define someone who has influenced countless numbers of people through her designs and her I suppose she she inspires people she inspires people to create beautiful works which was what her brief was to herself in the first place she wanted to inspire people to stitch work that looked beautiful and was beautiful to the beholder. Uh, what a shiny soul she is. Shiny soul. Anyway, I'll get emotional, so I'm moving on. <laughs> so this is the last thing I'm going to say. Now, this is Judy's Angel by Marilyn Levert Emblem there. And that's Judy's Angel. And here's the story. It's the Angel Quilt Project, and it says, for most stitchers, the first angel they hear about is Judy's Angel. This was the very first design created for this project, and it has a special meaning. Now, what they are talking about is the Angel Quilt Project, and it was founded on January 27, 2000, by James Farmer of Mississippi, and it's a non-profit group of stitches from all around the world that make handmade blankets which are given to hospitals in the United States, Canada and the UK that have either neonatal intensive care units or special care baby units for families with premature babies. Now submission instructions um, that you know they have on their website they have submission instructions and everything and I'll just put a link below to this Angel Quilt project. For anyone who's interested um, and it says the angel that graces the main page of this site is a rendering of Judy's angel in soft pinks to quote James Farmer the founder back in January 2000 when I started the AQP I had six originals who were with me that's members one of them was Judy Svoboda now that's S V-O-B-O-D-A 
She sent me the name of the first hospital to send panels to. She worked part-time as a volunteer in the children's ward. When I first thought of the AQP, Judy was one of the first and was one of my biggest supporters. The first designer I got in touch with was Marilyn Levitt Ingram of Lavender and Lace and Told in a Garden. I wanted her to design an angel for the AQP and she kindly agreed. On Labour Day weekend of 2000, my wife and I took a long weekend to get away for a while. When we returned, there was a message on the answering machine from Marilyn. I called her back and she told me that another member of the AQP had gotten in touch with her and had requested that she name the designed angel for the AQP, Judy's Angel. At the time, I told Marilyn that I had a member of named Judy, but as far as I knew, it wasn't for her. Boy, was I wrong. She got the email she'd received and read it to me. She said, it seems Judy had cancer, which I didn't know about, and she passed away when I was on my mini vacation. To say it really affected me is an understatement. I was totally shocked. I agreed with the lady who had sent the email to Marilyn. I believe it was Janet in New England who sent it and asked if she would name the angel in Judy's memory. When the copies got to me, it was just called the 2000 Christmas Angel. But in Judy's memory, we all call her Judy's Angel. If you look at the chart on the top left corner and the bottom left corner, you will see mentioned the AQP and Judy Svoboda. As a personal memorial to Judy, I stitched Judy's angel on full size quilt and sent it to her husband and children so they would have a reminder. It was the least I could do for her. I later got a letter from her daughter Mary Harder, who thanked me for the quilt and she's now a member of the AQP as well, which is very fitting. I know Judy would be proud of her. This is the, our way of remembering Judy for what she was able to do for us. Also, as another memorial, I sent the only piece that Judy completed to the hospital where she volunteered, and that piece is now framed and hanging on the wall at the children's unit where she did her work. Whenever I think of Judy's angel, I always think of her, and I'm so thankful for knowing her only for a little while while she was at the AQP. The story above is typical for Marilyn Levitt Imblem. She created wonderful detailed designs using almost no backstitching. Sadly, the stitching world lost our beloved Marilyn. She will always, beg your pardon, we will always honour her memory with Judy's angel, just as she honoured Judy. So, that tells you just about everything you need to know about this remarkable designer. His influence will go on and on and on, ad infinitum forever. <laughs> uh, so, thank you for your company. Uh, I probably haven't done her justice, but sometimes when someone's a legend, how can you? <laughs> so, thank you very much for your company. Uh, and until next time, all the best from Mary Rose and Stitch Bliss Corner. Bye for now.